morning and warm welcome to all. Thank you for taking time to join us here today for the conference on the move three, Smart Nation in the Making by Housing Development Board. Before we begin, I request you all to please switch your mobile phones and other devices to silent mode. You will also find a copy of the evaluation form on your seat, which we will need your help to complete at the end of the conference and pass it back to the staff. Good morning. Ms. Claire Chang, Senior Vice President and Co-Founder of Banyan Tree Corporate Private Limited and Chairperson of the Shireen Falser Program. Ms. Valit Lim, Lunch Actually Group and Board Member of the Shireen Falser Program. Mr. Tan Tsutyong, Center for Director of the Center of Excellence for Environmental Sustainability Research from HDB and distinguished guests. My name is Sakshi. I'm a volunteer with the Shireen Falza program and also a postgraduate student with SMU. I will be your MC for today. The Shireen Falza program and the Shireen Falza conference on the move consists of a series of conferences designed to bring women from all around the globe to discuss issues concerning to women in varying fields. Today, we learn about the sustainable development and improvements implemented under the HDB Green Pen and how, to in, and the, how the introduction of smart features has transformed Yuhua into a smart and sustainable neighborhood. Before I invite Ms. Valet Lim to deliver her welcome remarks, shall we invite Ms. Claire Chang to say a few words? Ms. Chang. Uh, first is a welcome to all. Uh, Conference of the Move is, is an initiative to actually reach out to uh, Singaporeans. And when we first started, um, and then we brought uh, rather clever Singaporeans so called to the conference and made them visit some of the uh, uh, places in the neighborhood, they all saw a different dimension of Singapore. And I think this is exactly what our uh, role is, to bring down topmost ideas to practical understanding and solutions for the community. So I hope you take this opportunity to network among yourself. There are a lot of representatives of various organizations here today. And there are also various, sometimes from people from, from overseas. I talked yeah, last night to a professor called um, Mr. Professor Dermot, who is actually delivering a lecture tomorrow at NTU called Future of Medicine. And we had an insightful conversation about aging in place, which for some of you, who have visited with us the Kampong Wellness Program in uh, Yisun. And I asked him whether the idea we wanted to do about supporting neighborhood residents through technology and smart technology so that people could actually stay at home and age in place. And he said it's not at all a simplistic idea. It is a very doable and in fact is a sustainable solution. And they are trying to look at more examples and case studies to see how we can combine technology with medicine treatment and the professional sector. And I also talked to somebody from the IFC, which is one of the banks that's actually funding on healthcare. And she too felt that this is also another model to really look at. Hence, after the visit to the wellness kampong, the last one, we decided to do something today to listen to it from, from the director and team on Smart Nation is for us to understand how technology can be used to enable quality living and experience. It's something we all take for granted because it's something that's very abstract. For some of us, we are definitely not into the field. But for the younger generations and all those who are sitting at the back, uh, as I said, there was a name card just now that is on the unpronounceable called Firmworks. They spelled it wrongly, but they make it into a, a brand. I think the use of technology is going to be something we all older ones 
in the front, front the middle, <laughs> middle row, middle segment. Oh, we need oh. to learn and we need to know because it's going to have impact on us. So with that, on that note, as the background of why we, we conceived this uh, seminar following the wellness compound, so that we could learn from the sharing today how to be operational efficient in terms of sustainable solutions in the way we live, something to do with water and electricity, and something that we could later on apply, whether it's a census scheme or the monetary system, we can actually have features of within our home so that we can actually have access to services when we are living alone or when we need services. So today, I hope you will enjoy a uh, morning on technology and its application. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Chung. I would like to now invite Ms. Valit Lim for the opening remarks. Um, thank you very much for the kind introduction and uh, thank you Claire for um, the, um, sharing with us the background of this. So a very good morning to everybody, um, of course to Claire, uh, the chairperson of the SFP program and um, of course to uh, Mr. Tan Sitiong, thank you for joining us today and of course our speaker for today, Ms. Lin Lee um, and of course all of you are very distinguished guests. It is my pleasure and of course my honour to moderate today's session on behalf of the Sharing Foster Programme, um, or in short, we call SFP. Can I have a quick show of hands? How many of you are attending our session for the first time? Quite, quite a lot of you, so welcome. Um, you're, you're going to have a great time because as you can see, there are a lot of people who have come back again, how, how they have enjoyed our programme. So um, I forgot that we have such a fantastic video, so that cut, helps to cut off like most of my speech. So that has given you a, a great introduction about what this programme is about and um, how we, we came about. And of course today, um, we are very happy to be at one of the highlights of our um, program, which is a conference on the move. And I think this is a great initiative uh, started um, with, um, with um, our chairperson, Claire, because I think the idea is that we attend a lot of different conferences out there and usually it's held at maybe auditoriums or uh, in function rooms so nothing wrong with that because we too hold a lot of such conferences but I think the idea is that we thought we wanted to bring our audience you know which is you guys not to just um, listen um, you know and just sit back but really to go in into where the action is so that's uh, the idea of conferences on the move and in the last two years we have had um, so many of them and I think you saw um, some of this on the video as well um, in in this year uh, in July we visited Beyond Social Services uh, where uh, Mr. Jared E shared about getting youths uh, in the community to engage with the seniors and some of you might have watched um, um, a program that was done by Channel News Asia recently yeah, where they got a group of seniors, you know, like and a group of secondary students. It's called Back to School. If you have not watched it, I highly recommend that you watch it because it's amazing. Um, the the changes that um you see in the seniors, they become more active. They actually did um health tests before and after, and you can see the improvement with the senior stats. And uh, it helped the secondary school students as well. So they actually chose um secondary school students that might have some um self esteem problems. And after you know like ten weeks, you know they work together for a term. The self-esteem of these students have improved as well. So um, it is actually fantastic. And uh, in September, we also visited the Republic Poly uh, Polytechnic, where RP lecturers and also uh, Ms. Uh, Zhu Jiaming from SMU shared on the topic of nutrition, well, uh, wellness, and health. And of course, today we are extremely delighted to be here with all of you at the Yuhua Estate to learn more about the smart nation in the making. I'm sure that since our Prime Minister, Mr. Li Xianlong, spoke about smart nation initiatives at the NDP speech, many of us were like scratching our head and wondering what the smart nation mean, okay, and how would these initiatives actually benefit us. Um, and actually in Yuhua, um, from July 2015 onwards, HDB actually announced that Yuhua will be the first resident to experience the smart living um, in an existing HDB estate. And within the neighbourhood, and some of you, after you park while walking over here, you might see some of these initiatives. I, I was quite impressed, you know, to see like the, um, um, the LED boards, you know, rather than the normal community boards where, you know, it's like you put the pins and the paper. This is actually flashing, you know, obviously a lot easier to update. And, um, you know, improve estate services with the help of sensors to monitor the performance of uh, municipal services, such as waste collection, consumption of electricity and water. And using this data collected, the town council can actually optimize the maintenance cycles and preempt problems and target uh, problems at the source. 
And you who are residents are also given the opportunity to experience first-hand usage of smart devices and solutions, such as the elderly monitoring system. Um, this allows residents to have better manage their utilities consumption, have a greater peace of mind with regards to the safety and well-being of elderly residents who may be alone at home. So, I'm um, very honoured to have with us today uh, Ms. Lin Li Chai Suan, the Principal Architect of Housing Development Board, to share more with us on the smart living initiatives here in Yuhua. Lin is also part of the team that is test building smart and sustainable solutions to enhance the living environment and create enduring homes for HDB residents. So, let's put our hands together to welcome on stage Lin to share more with us about the smart nation in the making. Thank you for having us here um, to share with you HDB's approach on smart nations in the making. Firstly, to give a brief introduction, um, HDB is the public housing authority in Singapore. And um, in the last 65 years, we have actually built approximately 1 million flats spread across 26 towns and estates. And we actually, in a, um, today, we actually house about 80% of our residence, uh, residence populations and with 94% of our residents owning their flats. With such a skill, we actually have much influence over the life of our residents and we strive to continuously improve the living experience of our residents. Sustainability is one of the key trusts in HDB Roadmap. And in 2011, we had actually developed this sustainable framework that, uh, that provides us with the objective, a clearer objective an initiative that we want to adopt to make our HDB estates more sustainable. We have mapped out 10 key uh, desired outcomes. There are environmental, economic and social sustainabilities. With the advancement of the ICT, we actually saw the opportunities to use smart technologies to further stretch our sustainability goals, targets and to make ourselves more uh, greater sustainabilities. In 2014, we actually developed this smart town frameworks where um, to, we actually wanted to outline our approach towards a smarter towns and to actually guide ourselves, our efforts in introducing smart elements in HDB towns. This smart town framework actually comprises of two layers. At the bottom layers is the smart uh, inf uh, enabling infrastructure where we actually consist of the sensors network, communications and data hubs. Above, we actually have these applications and services where we develop um, applications and services in the four dimensions, smart planning, smart environment, smart estates and smart living. The overall objective is to actually achieve a livable efficient, sustainable, and safe town. Some of the examples of our living labs are Tengah and Pongo. These are the brownfield site, and Yuhua, which is our existing estates. These living um, labs are places where we introduce our initiative and urban solutions in an integrated manner. And today, I will touch on Yuhua, which we have actually introduced our HDB green print and you will be visiting later. Yuhua is our pilot neighbourhood where we have introduced the HDB Green Print programs. A slew of eco features are actually introduced to make our existing estates more sustainable and green. Under the HDB Green Print, we have um, the initiative uh, classified into six sustainable categories. They are green commuting, landscape and greeneries, energy and water conservation, waste management and community engagement. The pilot project was launched in October 2012 and we have actually completed in November 2015. Currently, we are actually test building all the smart initiatives to further stretch our sustainability goals Now, let me share with you some of the sustainable features that we have introduced in Yuhua. In terms of the first mile and the last mile, LTA has actually the cycling plans um, for Jurong. We have actually reviewed and agreed to actually extend this cycling 
pedestrian path into our uh, pilot neighbourhood along Jurong East Street 21. With that, residents are able to enjoy greater connectivities and convenience to the nearby transport nodes and amenities. This is a before and after what we have actually implemented, a wider infrastructure, so that it actually encourages pedestrians and cycling. With the extension, the residents now are well connected by a 23.5 km of cycling path. Residents have also feedback to us that with this um, implementation of the cycling and pedestrian path, they are now, it's actually now more safer and more convenient for them to cycle to the neighbourhood um, amenities and MRT stations. And to further enhance our green commute, we have also introduced the dual bicycle rack system in 28 blocks in Yuhua. We have added 242 additional dual bicycle rack on top of the existing 196 lots. These dual bicycle rack are well received by our residents and due to popular demand, we have been requested to add more bicycle lots. 48 of them were added after that. Four months after the installation, we had actually conducted a site survey and we actually noticed, observed that this dual bicycle rack are well utilised by the residents. It is almost fully used up every time you go to any estates, any blocks that you can see. Can I quickly ask, what's the residence base, the population base for? To, over here for the Yuhua Green Print Zone is actually about 2,900 people. Yes, residents. yes. Okay, to reduce the urban heat island effect, HGB looks into um, introducing more greeneries to our existing estates by greening up the rooftops. And residents at the higher floor actually share with us that they, right now with the rooftop greenery, they actually have a nicer and more relaxing view. And with the installation of the rooftop greenery, we also managed to achieve an ambient temperature reduction of 1.6 degrees. We have also conduct a um, survey with the residents that live in the topmost floor of the nine blocks where we actually install the rooftop greeneries. Three quarters of them share with us that it is actually much cooler now. In addition to our rooftop greenery, we also look into adding vertical greeneries to the east-west facade of the um, facade wall in one block. And we have also conducted thermographic scan before and after installations of the vertical greeneries. With that, we actually managed to achieve a surface temperature reduction of 7 degrees. A surface temperature, yes. And this is actually much better than what we have target to achieve. Okay, in terms of uh, reducing energy demand, our approach is to actually increase um, energy efficiency by introducing energy savings technologies and supplementing it with renew, um, alternative energy um, sources. So for the lift, we have actually managed to reduce up to 20% energy reduction for all the lift operations by introducing this EERS, which is the Elevated Energy Regenerative System. Energy is, um, in terms of heat waste, is actually generated when leaves are in the moving um, motions or when it's actually coming to a stop. So all this kinetic energy are being generated and we actually used it to um, power up our services within the lift. As for the outdoor, we actually replace all the existing non-energy savings street lightings with LED street lightings to all our surface car parks and driveway leading to the um, surface car park. We managed to save up to 50% of the, um, I mean a reduction of 50% energy consumption. As for supplementing with renewable energy, HDB has installed solar PV system in 29 blocks of all the high-rise blocks within Yuhua. All these um, solar PV managed to actually fully power up all the services in the common area such as the pumps, the water pumps, leaves and all the lightings in the common area such as the void decks <coughs> and the corridors. 
So with that, we actually, with all the solar PV installed in our roof, we actually managed to generate energy up to 1.7 gigawatts per year. And this is actually equivalent to powering up 344 bedrooms in a year. Okay, to actually relieve the shortage of water, uh, portable water, we actually look into harvesting rainwater um, by test bathing the rainwater harvesting system. Rainwater are actually collected into a dedicated water tank located at the void deck um, in Yuhua. And the town council are able to use all this um, rainwater that is collected to wash the common corridor and as, as well as doing irrigations. So with that, we actually managed to test, we test bed and actually found that we save up to 1,700 cubic meters of water every year. And this is actually equivalent to 1.7 million of one liter of uh, water bottles, uh, bottles of water. Okay, moving on to PWCS, a pneumatic waste conveyance system. Yuhua was actually built in the year 1980s. And flats that are built in the 1980s actually have refuse hopper located in the kitchen within their household so that it actually convenience the residents to throw the refuse. But with that, it also means that workers therefore have to manually go from shoot to shoot at the ground floor to collect the refuse and transport it all to the centralized bin center. And this is actually quite laborious. So therefore, we have actually introduced um, PWCS to Yuhua. And to minimize the inconvenience to the residents, we have only retrofitted the um, refuse chamber at the ground floor. And we actually connect it with a very extensive underground pipe works that actually connects to the centralized bin point. Uh, bean center and the collection of waste is actually through suctions by the compressed air. So with that, we actually re um, remove the needs for workers to manually collect all the waste and to actually conduct the uh, maintenance. It actually reduce um, or we actually improve the productivity up to 60 percent. And with the enclosed waste collection by uh, using PWCS, we we actually found out that it is actually more hygienic compared to the past. Excuse me. Yep. So just to ask a question, so it compresses all the waste that goes down? No. Um, it's actually just, the waste is actually um, just as per it is, but we use compressed air okay. to actually um, induce the suctions to bring the waste to the centralized bin. The waste that we throw. Things yes. That we throw, yes. We consumables. Yes. Yeah. Okay. We, we don't compress it yet. Um, so at the ground floor, it's just being sucked to the centralized bin point. Yeah. So um, as PWCS is one of the initiatives that actually affect our residents the most, so we actually conducted the survey with 1,500 residents. And that is almost equivalent to half the population in Yihua. And with that, 84% of the residents actually told us that they are very satisfied with the PWCS. And apart from um, putting all the green initiatives and eco features in Yuhua, we also look into the community, getting the community to go greens and lead an eco lifestyle. Because with the involvement of the residents, this is equally important. So we actually develop a three prong approach. Firstly, we look into engaging and educating the community by raising the awareness on eco lifestyles and how the residents can actually contribute. And we actually um, have programs to actually encourage our residents to take ownerships to their um, neighborhoods and co create these uh, green solutions. We also have, um, we also enhance our community, the bonds between the residents by actually getting them to go do um, eco activities together. Some of the community programs and activities that we have actually um, organized to raise awareness and educate our residents are things such as road shows and exhibitions, where we actually showcase to them all the eco features and to actually um, address, um, to bring to them what is our green print plans so that they are more aware of all these sustainable features around them. We also have dialogue sessions to get feedbacks from the residents. And we also organize eco-learning journey 
where we actually bring the residents to places where there are eco features so that they know what are all these eco features that we are bringing to Yuhua. And to instill a stronger ownership and enhance con uh, connections between the residents, we actually introduce activities such as hobby farming, community gardens and community parklets. All these places are actually run and actually maintained by the residents themselves. After we build the place, we actually hand over the whole thing to the resident, not the town council. They manage the whole place themselves and it's still very well managed now. In addition, we have also set up this um, display corner at one of the Yuhua Void Deck area. It actually serves as a one-stop facility where we actually share and educate um, the, with our residents on the various green initiatives and how they can actually go green. Later on, we will actually bring you to this uh, display corner. Okay, we actually started with uh, sustainable features in Yuhua. Under the Green Print Program, we have a spectrum of um, sustainable features such as the green roof, solar PV systems, and the PWCX. Next, we actually look into a layer of smart technologies to further stretch our sustainability targets. We have actually identified 15 smart technologies to make Yuhua a smarter and greener neighborhood. Test bathing is currently still in progress. And to actually enable these um, data collections, HDB has introduced this um, CRMS, Centralized Remote Monitoring System, a network within the estates to enable collection of data through all the sensors. Okay, for smart living, HDB has been working with the private sectors to actually develop um, applications that are actually useful to our residents. And at the same time, to have ways to help HDB improve our infrastructures. We actually have introduced the utility management system and the elderly monitoring system. The utility management system um, allows the residents to actually check their energy and water usage through the mobile apps. And with that, they are actually able to even remotely turn off their appliances at home if it's actually left running um, through the mobile apps. And for the elderly monitoring system, sensors are actually um, installed at strategic locations within the household and a trigger will, um, alert will actually be triggered if there is any unusual behaviour that is actually detected. Um, and this actually allows our caregiver to actually monitor the well-being of their elderly at home and at the same time, it allows our elderly to actually age in place. Uh, Ms. Chang actually uh, just told me to actually share with you a little bit more on the Smart Enable Home. Um, I hope you all can throw us more questions later on um, during the Q&A so that we can actually share with you more on these areas. Okay, next we actually look into, um, to actually further stretch our uh, green commute, we introduce this Smart Mobility Rack System where <coughs> we actually test bed it in 10 blocks in Yuhua and is currently in operation. The trial will end in year 2019. With this uh, smart mo uh, mobility rack system, it actually has the apps that enable us to actually locate where is the nearest uh, available lots so that you don't have to go to a place and then realize ah, it's fully, fully used up and then you go to the next area. So with these apps, you are able to actually track it from your phone. And what is the best part about this app? you are able to book the place first through your mobile apps so that you can actually book it and then after when you go there, you won't realize, oh, somebody took it when I actually reached there. In addition, you can actually use the apps to unlock and release the bicycles. And with that, we are also, these apps also encourage um, cycling by having a route planning, which means you can actually plan from your um, zone, uh, location A to location B to find the nearest, easiest way to travel there. Um, for the monitoring of the pump system, currently, it is actually done manually, where any alerts are actually sent through the sirens. And actually, depending on whether there are people nearby, the alerts may not be um, uh, promptly rectified. So it actually affects the continuation and stability of water supply to our residents. Therefore, HDB look into 
introducing automations of our monitoring of pumps by introducing this uh, remote capacity. With that, we are able to optimize our maintenance cycle and also to preempt any faults um, that could have happened, any problems that could have happened. This actually um, allow us to actually provide a reliable estate management service to our residents. Okay. For this smart security access system, we have actually introduced it to the pump rooms, switch rooms, and even to the access to the rooftops. There has been cases in the past where there are unauthorized um, access to the rooftops. Um, examples are, you know, mixed body found in the water tank. This actually poses a very serious security issues to the well-being of our residents. Town Council has therefore taken actions into it by providing locks, and even to the extent where they have Cisco um, officers that accompany the contractors to go up to the roof when they actually conduct maintenance. But actually, this is not foolproof, because just as of last year, we have news of, you know, people going up to the roof to vandalize the rooftops. Therefore, HDB has introduced this smart security system. And with that, we are able to control the access um, to the service rooms and rooftop remotely. We are also able to track the personnel's movement <coughs> and to trigger alerts if there is any unauthorized entries. With that, it also helps to enhance our security and improve the work efficiency for the town council. Okay. These are just some of the smart initiatives that I'm actually sharing with you. Um, all the smart initiative is currently in progress and will complete in N2018. Sorry. We are actually, as, and with the successful implementations of all these smart and sustainable features, we are actually extending our HDB green print to Tengi, Amokyo area. And another 40 blocks will now be transformed into a greener neighborhood. And starting from our living labs, we actually replicate all these smart initiatives across the country. And we will make Singapore a truly smart nation with that. What's the target year? Mm. Five years plan. More than that. More than that. Because we. Yeah. Smarter and smarter. Yes. So, Yu is the first one, right? On the pilot scheme. Yes. 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 So uh, next one is the techie. Yes. Yeah. So when that uh, the whole Singapore the uh, the HDB will be uh, benefited? Okay. Be HDB is actually implementing it and test bedding it in these two pilot neighborhoods, okay. and upon finding success in all these pilot uh, R and D, mm -hmm. we will actually roll out as a program. Um, with the town council. For instance, if you know HDB always have these neighborhood renewal sister uh, programs or even HIPs or whatever, these are programs that we roll out. So we will actually park those successful um, um, test bedding into all these programs to be actually rolled out gradually. Mm. Yeah. yeah, so by what time? <laughs> we are continuously doing it, yeah. Okay. Um, I hope, thank you so much. I hope you all have learned more about the use of smart devices and solutions such as the elderly monitoring system and utilities management system and how these systems allow residents to have better managed their utilities, consumption and have a greater peace of mind with regards to the safety and well-being of elderly residents who may be alone at home. Let's now invite Ms. Lin Lee, Mr. Tan Young and Ms. Valit Lim to join us for the discussion and Q&A segment. Um, so, do we have any questions? If not, like, oh yeah, we do. Yes. Hi, Jeremy from Formal Architects. For the elderly monitoring, who is doing the monitoring and how is this arranged? <coughs> Um, the monitoring is actually taken care by the caregivers. It could be private organizations like uh, Eastern Alliance, right? Yeah. And a few of them, yeah. So, you know, for, for us, we really want to provide the, the digital infra and in terms of the appliances, right, the residents can actually engage from multiple uh, 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 other companies and they, they can have this uh, monitoring system through them. Do they have to pay? Uh, at the moment, the test bid in Yuhua is uh, at quite a low price. It's highly mm. subsidized. 
for the test bedding, um, we have actually some selected unit where um, all this we actually um, subsidize. But then, um, subsequent um, residents who are interested, we actually have this green home package um, that is actually rolled out to the residents where we actually work with the private vendors that they actually bring all these smart enable home features at a very low price and at a subsidized rate um, for the residents at Yuhua and subsequently for Amokyo Tinggi residents. Yeah. But eventually, well, I suppose the, the advantage of HDB doing it is that we've got the economies of scale. Like, uh, you, if you can see, we've got one million dwellings going backwards, right? We've got a scale and we can really lower the price. Now, there was earlier question of when are we rolling out all this uh, in Singapore. I think for new development, we are slowly putting in. So moving forward is quite an easy one. So in terms of smart enabled homes, some of the infra is already planned to be uh, tested in uh, places like Congo. And eventually, once it's all right, right, we'll just roll it up for entire Singapore. And those existing estates is really a big challenge. And we really need to develop a more viable business model to lower the cost for residents and eventually be rolled out in Singapore. Go ahead. So even what you said earlier about the census <coughs> in single elderly homes, mm -hmm. that is connected to a private vendor. Yes. And they have therefore the information and data of the residents. Yes. What if there are many competing vendors? Is possible? Um, actually, our main objective uh, is to actually connect eventually in future, to connect it to the caregiver. Um, who are the caregivers? It about? could be the family members who actually stay in a different estates. Uh, it could also be the SAC located um, at the, the, um, the Senior yeah. Activity Centre. Okay. Yeah. I mean, where we want, I mean, where, what we want to achieve is best by the caregiver, which is the elderly's own um, relative, children, or in, even neighbours around them. Yeah. But this census, I'm asking very stupid questions, eh? because I'm not in that gig journey. So this census, who, who is the controller and master controller of this information? Where does it go to? The cloud? Okay, all these are actually provided by a service provider. Also, For instance, Singtel, Starhubs, or even there are many service providers in the market. So it depending on the residents, which one are they actually um, subscribing to? So they have to know who to go to. Yes. yes. Mm. That's why we are actually organizing this Green Home Package mm. that we bring the spectrum, all the um, vendors in the market. I mean, not all, but most, uh, most of them, yeah. so that they can actually choose, look around, and source for and one that they the feel. Prices. Yeah. And what, what is it? What is it actually sensing? <coughs> A lot, of sensing, <laughs> a lot of sensing has to do with motion. For motion. elderly, yes. Motion. For okay. example, if an elderly spend too much time, especially in the toilet, maybe mm. the kitchen, uh, that's something that they will send about. When they notice there's, there's, it is really an abnormality already. So they will send an alert to the, to okay. the of kids. Uh. But it's not a device that a human has to wear. It's actually in the, in the flat itself. It's actually in the flat. Um, we actually have sensors located at, for <coughs> instance, the yeah. door of the, um, the toilet doors. Mm or even at the kitchen area where you know most of the elderly do their cooking or even in the bedrooms and then they will, for instance let me say an example if a residence usually um, a behavior will actually be detected over a month period say for instance this elderly every day wake up at 8 a.m in the morning go out of the house for breakfast come back at certain times you know doing a certain activities but for that particular day he did not wake up until 12 o'clock so this unusual behavior will be detected and sent through the alerts to the caregiver. Then they will actually give a call to see whether is the person okay. Yeah. Does the elderly have to wear something or it is like one of the sensing yeah. camera oh, in the home? We do not encourage camera because privacy. camera is there's oh, privacy oh, issue. Movement sensors. Yeah. Movement yeah. But they are not attached to the body, they are just at a home. It's at the home, the doorway. But then anything that is out of the home zone, if there are also devices that the residents can get from the vendor, which is actually a wearable device, but uh, then they will actually be detected um, if they were to move out. Yeah. Remember those who went with us to Kutik Port Hospital mm -hmm. to answer Andrea's question? Mm -hmm. They're actually developing a chip in the bed so that they know exactly how the patient sleeps. 
So when the patient turns, mm -hmm. the frequency of the turn, or if the patient wants to get out of bed, then the command center that's up, that is watching all these patients know that Auntie who is, who is coming out of bed, they're alert. Yeah. So that's one. The one I saw in <coughs> Copenhagen is a sensor in this room, for example. It's a little thing. It used to cost a few thousand dollars. Apparently now, it's a few dollars. Mm -hmm. And they're able to regulate to the control center on the temperature of this room. If outside is storming and raining, this will need to be at 24 rather at 22. Because it is hot outside, it's 22. If it is very cold outside, mm -hmm. it automatically regulates to a certain temperature that we're all comfortable with. I is that how it works? Um, that is what means not so senses? much of temperature for us. Yeah, yeah, we don't look into temperature. Well, energy. Energy. Yeah. So this one is for movements, movements, movements of people. people. Movements. Yes. Oh. Hmm. So is it cater to like each individual elderly? Because yeah, different like packages different for different people. Different people. Different people. Mm. So how effective? How effective? What I mean is, how uh, that? Uh, what what what's your what's your action? That uh, you you just call the care caregiver, and uh, what I mean is actually now in China, they encourage the people <coughs> go to the old folks home because there. Actually, that's what we do. Uh, we do. Yes, no. I, I I of course I know I know that is uh, people because over there that uh, you have people. Just yeah, know sure. that uh, what's wrong with you. But at home, but at home, if you are lonely at home, that nobody will know. So that's why that uh, so, that there are so many cases that the people just die lonely, mm. and uh, even their neighbor don't know anything. So I don't know how <laughs> effective is your now the sense. Uh, sensors and all this. I think and, in uh, terms of technology, uh, more or less, is effective. Yeah, I think the key challenge here is uh, for the elderly, how you convince them to adopt such system. Yes. It's quite sensitive when you go door to door, exactly. knocking at them, and exactly. asking, do you want this home in early morning? Exactly. System. The first idea they get is, Am I, is something going to happen to me? You know, that kind of feeling. <laughs> so, sometimes we've got to go through actually the, the kids, go through the kids to persuade the parents. And for you, I think now we've got about 70 units test building such a smart home uh, so HDB's role is to just provide the infrastructure. Ah. Then you still need the service provider that with you the, pay with the to, service provider. to take up the next... Yes. Mm. At a very highly subsidized rate. What, what does that mean? Uh? I don't know. What's, it's like what's, a, what's a like? <coughs> Are you um, still talking about a few thousand dollars? No, 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 definitely not. No. No. Are you talking about broadband packages? Or it's all run that? together with the home energy management system and it's very affordable. Okay, I don't affordable have is how much is affordable? Oh, yeah. It depends on because the th there is actually different package and how extensive the residents oh, want. I want the whole package. <laughs> 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 and also depends on different service provider, the type of package. And, um, Give me the cheapest and the highest. <laughs> An indication, a band. <laughs> no. um, so, the way how to use it and the education, the, the, the awareness yes. and uh, how to use it. <coughs> really and the training yeah, yeah, and yeah, training yeah, 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 all, all this. Actually, we are working with Pioneer Generation, uh, PA, mm. PUB, NEA, more utilities to actually organize basic courses uh, to, to make them more aware of such systems, how they use it. What's the indicative package cost? I, I wouldn't. If I never recall wrongly, the cheapest is just $10 per month. Yeah, but, $10? Yes, yes. But, but we do not want to commit for service provider That's because we do not know. Um, it's just you know, indicative. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Yeah, there are people who always cho who, who choose both no, the elderly care and the utility management system. Ah, that one is a bit more. No, that so that one will help you monitor your energy consumption and so on. Yeah, just to share, because I last two years, I installed a chart, chart monitoring system inside my house. I mean, my Why house is, is a normal HDB house, and this chart monitoring system uh, not not only de uh, detect smoke but also detect uh, because my grandmother was staying with me. So, I mean, just to share on the monitoring system, once the once the sensor detects something unusual, immediately it call police, ambulance, and. <laughs> And everything in one, two minutes, everything, uh, I mean, everyone start calling and come to my house. Like ambulance, police, fire brigades. In two minutes, the, uh, the fire, the police and ambulance. Yeah. So just to answer, because there was a question like, 
where this I mean who will get the message I mean so you subscribe to Chap yeah that does all this yes and what do you pay we paid uh, monthly about sixty dollars something about that security. yeah security security, oh, security. Yeah. so there's one I mean it's, it's I mean it's quite a comprehensive for fire for home yeah, security yeah. or even the elderly detection system yeah mm -hmm. so for your system you might just call the Caregiver, เขาเก็บไว้เขาเก็บไว้เขาเก็บไว้เขาเก็บไว้เขาเก็บไว้เขาเก็บไว้เขาเก็บไว้เขาเก็บไว้เขาเก็บไว้เขาเก็บไว้
The utilities the utilities okay, packages. The utilities right? one, there's one of the test bit. I think one of the residents managed to get about 10, 5, 10 percent saving. Mm -hmm. But this one depends on residents though, because some are really heavy energy users, some are not. If you go to those elderly, uh, more senior homes here, right, actually they are quite uh, environmentally conscious. Yes. They don't really use aircon for the elderly. Exactly. Yes, yes. So all this home energy management system is uh, more suitable for the, the, yeah. the young people. Yes. Yes. Going back to the topic of um, yeah, because just now, just now the old folks home that we mentioned, maybe people are still against the idea. But I'm just trying to recall when children are young, we feel that we have to send them to the childcare center so that there is proper regime mm -hmm. for them to go through. Mm -hmm. So likewise, when I when I think of elderly people, uh, who sometimes the behavior may also be you know gradually uh, deteriorating. Maybe a bit of shift of paradigm, sending them to the old folks' home. If we properly do the old folks' home mm. up properly yeah. next to the childcare centre, mm. there should be synergy in there. Mm. Then we will not be against the idea of sending people to old folks' mm. home because then there is proper regime and all the monitoring set up. There is cost effectiveness, mm. you know, that everything put in to gather people together and the old and young you know, congregates together. I think there is there is a certain benefits, <laughs> but I think all this may take time to yeah. develop. Yeah, rather than so leave them fact, individually yeah, at home. In fact, if you go to other countries, like, this kind of uh, uh, arrangement is quite common. So I have friends, I don't know, they are quite open. In Hong Kong, they are quite okay to stay in old folks' home. I don't know why. Yeah, I think we, so we just have to okay do it properly. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Yes. So there is uh, the yeah, economy of skills and also. Can, can I come in here? So this is the debate that we've had for the last two years and we'll continue to debate for the next 10 years as Singapore age. And we're aging very fast. Do we age in place, meaning your room in your HDB flat? is converted into like a ward with the beds that can go up and down with all the sensor that connects you to. But connect to who? Mm -hmm. Who is the service provider? Mm -hmm. It could be the neighborhood hub where mm -hmm. you have 10 volunteers or Correct. one professional or two professionals but connected to a hospital like Kutekpoi. So the hospital, the volunteers, the residents all connected into an ecosystem. <coughs> So the literature has shown that living in a home showed that people are lonelier. They don't recover as well mm. and they're not mm. happy. Mm. They need to be in their own home, in a neighborhood where they see young people or they have young, you know, younger teenagers to come. They need noise, mm. they need visual exactly. diversity. Yes, yes, yes. All together in one spot, seeing old people and quietness, <laughs> actually make them die faster. Mm, yes. Yes. So the literature shows therefore we shift the paradigm mm. not to just efficient nursing home but to more practical efficient aging in place neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. And that's the experiment we are working with mm -hmm. and, the, and the experiment we saw was the wellness kampong in Yishun. They've done Yishun Central, they've done Yishun East, mm -hmm. they've Chung done Pang. Yishun Chengpang and now we are helping to support Yishun South. South so that it actually reached out to 100,000 mm. residents. And now they already have the group of the, uh, nurses and volunteers where they every morning come and do 8 to 10 to do stretching. And then they come and bring their food mm. to cook. Mm -hmm. And then next they have a garden like what you do. Mm -hmm. Now the thing that's lacking, that's why we're interested in your smart nation, is that technology part. Mm -hmm. How do we connect the homes to that command center, which is run by volunteers, professionals, <coughs> and connected to Kotekpat. So I can imagine auntie in block 64, press a bell and say, I need help, gets to the platform controller that said that auntie 64 needs help. What sign of help? Maybe the caregiver can give information type retrieve from the cloud the vital signs or a document of whether she's Alzheimer's or whether she is bedridden, etc. And that information can go through to Kotek Park Hospital, which has a registry of anti block 64. Mm. Then they can call whoever that is needed, whether it's medical, 
or whether it's the chicken rice, <laughs> or whether it's the container, whatever, you know. So it saves, you know how much time it saves? It saves auntie having to manipulate and call and wait. Ambulance comes, takes 30 minutes. Mm. Ambulance goes to somewhere, takes another 30 minutes. Mm. And you get to the hospital, you wait for one hour. And then auntie has to fill the form, another hour. Need a translator to help to fill the form, another hour. So by the time they get to the doctor, the doctor says, wait, it is entirely about nine to 10 hours before auntie gets help. And that's where we are hoping to see how technology can help to cut that process going through to smart technology. But I think HDB's role is now, I understand, is to do the infrastructure, mm -hmm. yes. but the service providers are people we can contact to, well, to, to introduce to the house, houses mm -hmm. that must pay for it. I'm happy to know it's only $10 for whole package. But I think I think the, the so the question now is uh, who pays, who pays in the end, even if you build you know from what you say the efficient nursing home, somebody <coughs> has to pay yeah. to build that home and then monthly maintenance. We are the professionals, so the solution really I I'm really for AG in place, and Singapore is a great laboratory for it because of our density. We have an opportunity to showcase a laboratory if it works to all the cities in the world, KL, Hong Kong, etc. Because we are dense. So if we can service 3 million people doing this way and looking at the very impressive spread that you will tackle in each neighborhood, we are actually a fantastic, it's a fantastic solution. As to how to solve the loneliness and all that, that is the culture. I, I, you know what happened to the homes? Mm -hmm. The rich kids every month sign a check, two thousand dollars, not less than thousand five, huh, by the way, not less than thousand five. It's a lot of money, and you, you need more. They sign a check and they give it to the home, and they don't come anymore. And now, that's what we we're hoping to yeah. avoid. Right? Yes. Now the thing is not the old folks' home, but the old folks' village. Yes. That uh, the people they stay there. That's what they're doing uh, Yes, wow. yes, that is very important. You know the, the, the Nobel uh, Prize, the laureate, the, 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 the Xian Yang, he, uh, he, he, he married when he's uh, 82, he married a 28 young girls. Uh. He, what, what he said that in Florida, that uh, they have an uh, uh, old folks village, that uh, when, when, when he's not that old, they, they visit that. He said that if I if I don't marry this young lady, I will go, I will stay there, and maybe I will choose a, a widow so that I uh, can enjoy my life, the rest of my life. So the solution? Yeah, it's a, it's a, <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it's a community. What I mean is, it's a community. You see, the people, they can, they can uh, chit chat together, you know, and then they will not trouble the yes. youngsters, you yes. see. Yes. And also the, the volunteer, they have their own, 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 own things to do. The people, when they are getting older, they are very, very want independence, you know. They okay. don't want to yeah. trouble people. I stop. I'll stop you here. <laughs> <laughs> yes, okay. yes, yes, yes. Um, so, thank you very much for that. Maybe you can take it uh, after this, yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have five more minutes, so do we have any other questions with regards to some of the you know, Smart Nation initiatives that Lin has just shared with us in her presentation? Um, yes, um, maybe you would like to introduce yourself. Yeah, yeah. My, my name is Eddie Lee, I work as a volunteer for Waterways Watch Society. Yeah. I'm a retiree, oh, and I also do volunteer work for home visits for old folks. Uh, on your figure, even we have 6% rental, so I guess uh, your priority of moving on to uh, different um, HDB estates. Will the rental unit a bigger challenge for you? Because they don't have the ownership and the tenants are, I would say, uh, will not treasure it that much. And most of these rental flats are very old. Mm -hmm. And uh, one or two, you know, um, and then the tenants are really do not have that sense of belonging compared to ownership. Uh, also, do you have this say, issue we're on the PAP uh, constitution first and then the opposition later, something like that. Yeah, I'll just talk about rental <laughs> housing as well from HDB perspective. Of course, now you, we still have 6%, which is on rental. Uh, I think in every country or every society, there are bound to be this 
group of people that we need to help. So in fact, for rental housing, we are still building. There are new rental housing in Pongo, Sengkang, which is very, very well uh, integrated with all the so flats. So we also don't want to, you know, draw a line between rental and so flats. But the present old rental one is where we, you know, most of the tenants are. It's not like the, uh, you know, clinical or Hong Kong, that the, uh, the profile of the resident. You're saying that the profile is old, isn't it? Yeah, it's old and then it's mixed and then uh, poor income and all that. So, uh, of, of course, there are organizations that is always helping all these uh, rental units. Uh, for example, I mean, I mean, within HDB, we do have programs. I think it's every last Friday of the month or what, we would like, you know, give, go to certain rental housing estate and give out some goodies, some food to the, to the, to the people. And uh, yeah, as I was, I was talking, this rental housing, we are still building. Uh, along the way, we also try to help them see whether they can own a flat for, for themselves. So, in fact, we do give very huge discount to this group of people because we want them to own a home. And that the reason is, like what you say, from a home ownership program, we also notice that when people start to own a home, right, they start to take care of the home properly and they build stronger community with the residents nearby. That's, that's what we want to do. Try to reduce this 6% to, I mean, I don't know. What's the age profile? It comes in various age profile. But these people are really the low income. To qualify for rental housing is Household income less than thousand, thousand five. five. For total household. And, household. Yeah. Total and household. The rental for one rental unit unit right, can be as low as maybe thirty dollars per month. It's very heavily subsidized. But we still want them to, you know, own a home eventually. If they are young they can find a job. If we want them to own a home. You're talking about six percent in Yu Hua No, no, in the whole Singapore. Singapore. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. What what's the number we're talking about? Uh, one million six sixty thousand. Sixty thousand. Yeah. You're talking about sixty thousand. Oh, one million. Okay, thank you very much for your participation. Uh, we are very happy that there are so many questions today. But I'm sure uh, Lin and uh, Mr. Tan will be joining us for the tour as well, right? So uh, you can uh, ask them any questions. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, thank you, uh, Lin, for sharing. Uh, we have learned a lot today about HDB Green Queen program, uh, where she shared with us about um, the bicycle racks, the rooftop greenery, you know, uh, vertical greenery, uh, solar uh, solar system, as well as of course the smart technologies, uh, utility management system, elderly monitoring system, which a lot of us are very interested in, and um, of course the smart security access system as well. Um, so thank you uh, for joining us today. And now I need to uh, sell a bit of koyo because I need to tell you about our upcoming event. As you can see, you know, this is a very good event. So please do uh, join us for our next one. So the next event is actually on the 29th of November, uh, 6 p.m. at SMU, and it's an event called Women in Top Management. So we do join you uh, for, and we do uh, want you to join us for an evening of networking and sharing by um, renowned executive search consultant, um, Heiner Torbrock on how you can define your ambitions and make them a reality. And you also hear from Board Agenda Chair and Co-Founder Ms. Judy Fu um, and uh, Ms. Karen Loon as they discuss how women and men can work out the stereotype barriers and navigate the corporate waters in a contested terrain to gain traction and direction. Okay, that was a mouthful. Okay, so thank you very much and uh, please join us on the tour now. Okay, thank you. Thank and also, you. it's the last event of the year, so it's a networking event. We already have 130 people signed up, so please uh, come. We have a lot of uh, um, light refreshment and to network so that you can meet all the others in front of you. Uh, thank you, everyone. And uh, now, I, before we set uh, for the estate tour, I, I would request everyone to please fill the evaluation form. And uh, please give it to one of the staff members or please keep it at the registration table. <coughs> also, our guide for today is Mr. Vincent Lim, Senior Engineer from HDB. Vincent will bring us around the neighborhood to gain a better understanding of the smart features in Yuha Estate. Please feel free to ask him any questions along the way. Thank you so much for coming today. Thank you.